Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Brandon Price. I am a detective sergeant with the Toronto Police Service Homicide Squad. Four years ago, the Toronto Police Service responded to an emergency call for service at the home on Old Colony Road. When officers arrived, they located Barry and Honey Sherman deceased within their residence. It was later determined that both had died of ligature neck compression. Since that time, members of the Homicide Squad with the cooperation and support of numerous other Toronto Police Service units have worked diligently to identify the person or persons responsible. So far, the investigation has involved 41 judicial authorizations, approximately 250 witness interviews, 1,255 tips have been provided to the police from the public, 992 investigative actions have been undertaken. We have remained steadfast in our commitment to bring closure to the Sherman family, their friends, loved ones, and the community. At the outside of, the inv of this investigation, we seized a very large amount of security video footage. Some of these videos were from locations in the area of Old Colony Road. Numerous individuals were found on the video in the neighborhood and our team took extraordinary efforts to identify and investigate those individuals to be able to include them or exclude them from our investigation. These efforts included, but were not limited to, requesting video analysis from law enforcement partners such as the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Ontario Provincial Police. Our own forensic video analysis unit conducted photogametry measurements this involves attempts to determine physical identifiers, such as the approximate height of persons captured on the videos. We've also obtained judicial authorizations to collect data from nearby cell phone towers and cross-reference that with the physical locations of individuals on the videos. We've also conducted numerous canvases of the neighborhood to identify individuals on the videos. We have been able to eliminate the vast majority of people captured on the video. We are left with one individual whom we have been unable to identify. I'll ask that you take a look at the screen and observe this individual. Through our investigation, we have been unable to determine what this individual's purpose was in the neighborhood. The timing of this individual's appearance is in line with when we believe the murders took place. Based on this evidence, we're classifying this individual as a suspect. Though there is a lack of detail in features of this individual, we believe that further information from the public could assist us in making an identification. I would ask that you pay particular attention to the gait or the stride or walk style that this person uh, has on the video. We are not able to provide you with any certainty the person's age, weight, or skin color. However, through photogametry performed, we have been able to determine that the suspect in this video is standing between five foot six and three quarters and not five foot nine and a half inches. There may be a legitimate explanation as to what this person's actions were in the area. If you recognize yourself in this video, please come forward so you can be excluded from our investigation. However, it is our hope that someone will come forward with a name when they recognize the individual's walk, the way in which they kick up their right foot with every step, knowing that the person was or is connected to the Sherman family or was in the area on that day at that time. To be clear, this release is in no way an indication of a conclusion to this investigation. From the beginning, this has been a multifaceted investigation and we will continue to work on various other avenues of investigation that we have undertaken and keep an open mind to new ones. In my recent conversations with the Sherman family, they have asked me to remind the public 
that their private $10 million reward is still available. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. We're going to go online uh, first. I will call out your name. If you have a question, please ask. If not, just please say pass, and uh, we will provide another opportunity at the end. Uh, Ellen Bessner, please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much. I'm Ellen Bessner with the Canadian Jewish News. Uh, Detective Sergeant, are there other people assisting you now uh, with the investigation, or are you still solo? No, I've never been a solo on this investigation. Uh, from the beginning, we had uh, a huge complement of officers to sort of take care of the initial uh, mass of uh, data um, and information processing at the beginning. At this point now, uh, I have uh, the, my primary partner in this is uh, Detective Constable Yim, who uh, is on a daily basis assigned to this and works uh, diligently on this investigation. Do you have another question, Ellen? Not for now, thanks. Enzo, please go ahead. Oh. Enzo, sorry, please try again. You're muted, Enzo. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Uh, JP Nadeau, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm JP with the CBC French. Um, Detective Sergeant, could you please tell me what time is it on the tape right now? Because from here, on my screen, it seems like it's daylight, but I guess it's nighttime, no? That's correct. Uh, I'm not going to uh, say exactly the time of uh, this clip, but I will say it is in the evening or night hours of December 13th, 2017. Uh, and you're correct, it's, uh, it's sort of quite bright, uh, but that's partly to do with the type of camera that was recording. Do you have another question, JP? Uh, yes, and the only description you can give is the height of that suspect person? I think that, uh, you know, when people take a close look at this individual, they'll be able to determine that there's a, a jacket that's being worn, there's some type of headdress, uh, whether it be a hat or part of a hood, uh, long pants and some boots that can be seen. Um, further scrutiny and detail. Uh, was undertaken to determine uh, with finer, with a, you know, a, get a better idea of what it exactly it was that those items were. And we were unable to sort of determine exactly what type of boot that was or those kinds of, those kinds of things. Thanks, JP. Uh, Maman Qureshi, do you have a question? I do, yes. Good morning, uh, Detective Sergeant. Thanks for taking my question. I'm just uh, wondering why... Um, I, th I believe this is the first time the term suspect is being used in this investigation and why uh, you, you said this person could potentially be eliminated. Uh, so why uh, they're a suspect versus a person of interest? I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. Sure. So the, uh, that's a good question. So this footage is not the only footage of this individual that we have. We have sure. uh, done an, an exhaustive uh, video canvas uh, of the whole area and we have um, based on the timing of when we understand, when we believe the murders took place, we have this individual coming into a very defined area uh, around the uh, Sherman's household and remaining in that area for a period and then leaving from that area. So we have been unable to um, identify what purpose that person had to be within that defined area. Um, and therefore, and the timing is, uh, is in line with our uh, belief as to when this, uh, these murders took place. And so that is why we classify this individual as a suspect. Any follow-up, Maman? Yeah, just one. Just wanted to know if this uh, video has been shared with the uh, members of the Sherman family and if they were able to give you any information as to whether they know or are, are unable to recognize this person. I, I did share it with the, the Sherman family, uh, and uh, as always, my conversations uh, with them will remain private, uh, but they have been uh, very supportive and very helpful all the way through this investigation, um, and uh, I look forward to their continued support. Thanks. Rob Gillies, AP, do you have a question? Yes, yeah, that's a, quite a unique gait that he has, the way he walks with that right foot kicking it up. 
Um, is you mentioned there was other video? Why not release uh, the other videos of, of the suspect? Uh, the reason is that uh, this is amongst the the best images of this individual that we have. So we've sort of chosen the best one that has the greatest uh, likelihood of somebody being able to identify this individual from. So that's why we've chosen to release this one. Okay. Any follow up, Rob? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Tyler Dawson, please go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned that this individual is seen going into a defined area. Um, what do you mean by that? Is that are they going onto the Sherman's property? Are they on public property, walking down the street? Like, like, what do you mean by defined area? And, and like, so, I mean, what makes that of interest? Uh, yeah. So, so in our exhaustive uh, video canvas, uh, we were able to get images from nearby on either side kind of and around the Sherman household and this individual walks into that area does not continue to walk through but remains in that area that's not covered by uh, video footage and remains in there and then comes back out uh, sometime later um, and that's how we have been able to sort of narrow this individual's uh, location down. Any follow-up, Tyler? Um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else to, to lead you to believe that this person's a suspect other than they sort of go out of camera view for a period of time? Well, it's a, it's a fairly defined uh, area, so, and uh, like I said before, we were able to eliminate uh, pretty well every other person um, on the, the video footage uh, that we've obtained, um, and so, we're left with a, a, a very glaring sort of unknown with this individual that requires an explanation if there's a legitimate one. Thanks, everyone. We're just going to move uh, into the room now. Catherine, go ahead, please. Hi, Catherine McDonald from Global News. Um, why did it take you four years to release this video? So as you can see, um, partly to do with the uh, sort of poor quality of the image, um, the investigative considerations were that the cost to the investigation by releasing this early on uh, would have outweighed the benefit of releasing it early on. Uh, so we t undertook these investigative steps, exhaustive investigative steps, um, to identify this individual. Uh, and now having gotten to the point where we have not been able to do so with these videos, uh, this is now the prudent time to release this to the public and seek the public's assistance. So I'm not going to get into the exact timing of it. I would say, uh, I mean, I can just generally answer that it is a very suspicious amount of time. It, it's in line with our belief as to when these uh, murders took place. And so that's, that's the, about as tight as I can get you. And is there any video showing him like leaving in a vehicle or arriving in a vehicle? Or do you have any idea of how he came to Old Colony Road and left? So I'm, I'm not going to get into that. I'm sorry. Thank you. You mentioned uh, the fact that there, there was a cost that outweighed the benefit at the time. What do you mean when you say cost? Can you expand on that for us? So, I mean, I'm not going to get into what those are, but they're investigative considerations, uh, and that's about as deep as I can get into it with regard to this. Is it budget that you didn't want to make? No, no, it's not a nothing financial. It is an, a cost to the uh, um, integrity of the investigation or the potential um, benefit to the investigation uh, if, if we uh, identify this individual on our own as opposed to releasing it widely to the public. Well, you can see this as well as I can. Uh, it's very difficult to say with any level of certainty whether this is a male or a female. So I, I wouldn't declare one or the other at this point. Or are, are there still potential that it was committed by more than one person? 
Uh, there's certainly a potential. Uh, we're keeping an open mind to, to that possibility. There's a lot of scenarios, but one thing I can say is that this individual's uh, actions are highly suspicious. What do you say if there's a critic who says, you know, police were releasing this video because they're at a dead end, and this is a Hail Mary pass to try and solve this crime? Uh, well, I mean, this is commonly, we get uh, questioned for updates, 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 and the, the common misconception in the public and, and often in the press is that nothing's going on when the police are not updating. And, and, and really, at the end of the day, uh, the most important thing for us is the integrity of the investigation. And unless it is a beneficial to the investigation to release information, it's not going to be uh, something that we're going to do. We are constantly balancing uh, um, you know, the public interest to, to, have to, to know what's going on and to scrutinize the police work. And that is why we have released information. Um, and, but we do it on a, on a tactical, um, very calculated and careful uh, timeline. And so we will not rush into releasing information. Uh, this, like I said, is a very multifaceted investigation right from the beginning. It continues to be. Um, this was a very complex um, effort to reach this point. Uh, the cellular telephone data portion of this investigation uh, to, in attempts to identify this individual um, yielded uh, you know, tens of thousands of data lines that needed to be analyzed. These kinds of things take a great deal of time. And earlier I spoke of 992, I believe, investigative actions. Analyzed data from cell phone tower download is one line of the 992 to give you some measure of perspective of what can be going on in this investigation. If this is the best quality of this person, suspect, and what has linked the other videos to think it's the same person? I mean, it's like when, when we're tracking individuals, you can, you can logically uh, connect one individual walking out of one frame and into another frame uh, with some measure of certainty. Uh, as you can see there, you can tell the, to some measure with the clothing this individual is wearing. It is discernible on the other uh, footage it's just not as not as clearly discernible uh, but um, we have a, a great deal of confidence that we have properly tracked this individual to and from the location can you tell us where this video was captured and, and even which direction the suspect appears to be going in no i'm not going to get into further detail uh, as to the location or the directions of travel thank you though So we have gathered four terabytes of video footage in this investigation, and a great deal of it was from the area around uh, Old Colony Road and the surrounding neighborhood. Um, I'm not going to get further into it, but the, the, the walking is generally the, the action um, uh, leading him, this individual to and from the defined area. I don't know if I would say it's the, it's the biggest lead. It is. It's been with us from the from the early stages of this investigation. Uh, it took some time to collect all of this footage. It took some time to analyze the footage to be able to link the, the, the these images together uh, and identify that this individual's uh, time timeline was was uh, consistent with when we believe these uh, offenses took place. Um, but f there's other avenues of investigation that we have undertaken and are, and are ongoing. Um, this is certainly a valuable piece of evidence, though. Thank you, Sergeant. I have two questions, uh, Kevin Long and Ms. Hollister. The first one is, uh, last year there was a discussion, you put out a release saying there were numerous persons of interest and you haven't identified them. Uh, have you looked at each of those people to see if they match this person? 
and have you excluded of people of interest? So I don't like to say that we've excluded people or included people specifically, so we certainly won't get into that. Um, but it's a consideration. Now, the, the fact is, is that nobody can be 100% uh, excluded because there's always possibility, and we'll keep an open mind to, uh, that there's more than the one individual who executes the uh, action that may be culpable. So we're certainly keeping an open mind to that, and so. But, but you have looked at those people that you identified as persons of interest to see if their body style and walking uh, matches. Yes. You've done that, and they do not. Well, we need to get a lot more uh, than that to be able to um, move that individual, any individual that we are looking at, to a level of a suspect. Okay. Um, but this individual is a suspect. So um, I don't think it's a, so like I said, it's a very well-defined area uh, around the uh, Sherman property. Um, I won't say whether we have onto specifically the uh, property itself, though. But, but there is video across the street uh, on the quality that should show you something. Uh, and what, I'm sure you check that from that homeowner to see if you see this person going in or does it come in from the street? All footage that could be collected was collected by the Toronto Police. Uh, we have analyzed it all, and I'm not going to get into uh, what exactly we see this individual doing uh, when it comes to uh, the address itself. Okay. And last question, but the defined area, does it include, it obviously includes the Sherman property, does it include a couple of other houses around there, or is the defined area... No, it's it's a well it's a well defined area. It is tight to the Sherman property. Tight to the Sherman property. Okay, thank you. Any other questions in the room? Any other questions online? I have one. Sorry, just because it's hard for us who are online to see. This video is going to be on the TPS website, so we can download it. Or how do we get it? Yes, a news release uh, will be published if it has not been published already. It includes a link to the video as well as a screen capture in a still format uh, as well. If there are any other questions after that news release has been published, you can uh, please contact Corporate Communications. Thanks for joining our news conference today. Thank you.